What's up everybody? I'm gonna go ahead and be honest up front. I know this video is not gonna be for everybody because a lot of people do come to my channel because of my Funko news videos and Funko related videos, uh, but this is not a haul video or a news video, anything like that. Really, it's not about Funko. Um, this is about storytelling in Star Wars. And I'm saying star storytelling in Star Wars instead of Star Wars and storytelling because that's what I'm mainly focusing on. I, I like storytelling. Um, that's why on my channel I will do movie reviews sometimes and um, you know I'll just talk about movies, older movies, directors and different things like that. I've done collaborative move, um, videos with uh, Matthew movies you know about movies that we both appreciate and actors and directors you know so all those types of things but I, I really like storytelling. That's really what it always comes down to when I focus on movies and there's so much that I appreciate about the original trilogy of Star Wars of course episodes 4 through 6. So that's going to be the main focus here, the storytelling of Star Wars. And um, I know there's a lot of positive things about the original trilogy, including the special effects, the practical effects, John Williams' score, the directing. And, of course, the first three movies were not all directed by George Lucas, but obviously he was like the godfather over those movies. He wrote them. He had a hand in them. You know, he was always there. So, um... Yeah, again, a lot of great things about the movies, but I'm going to focus specifically on storytelling and also what I think other filmmakers and other writers can take away from the original trilogy. So obviously throughout this video, there will be spoilers for um, the Star Wars movies, including um, the other movies, you know, not just the original trilogy. So if you haven't seen a particular movie, you may want to kind of jump past it or maybe come back to this video if you hear me about to talk about a movie that you haven't seen yet you know you may just want to avoid that in case of spoilers um, and I will talk about some movies beyond the Star Wars universe as well so just fair warning there there will be some spoilers but I will try to limit them as much as possible for movies that are outside of the Star Wars universe okay so let me go ahead and get into it here starting off with the hero's journey now, really at the heart of the original trilogy, it is about Luke Skywalker and his journey. Of course, there are a lot of other characters there, which I will touch on. But, you know, he was at the heart of this movie. And he started off very much as a sheltered young man that just what didn't really know what he was doing with his life. He expressed that within the movie. And then, of course, through Obi-Wan, he learns about the Force. And um, he spends a lot of time training especially in the second movie, The Empire Strikes Back, which um, is my favorite, and I think a lot of people still feel the same way, that it's the best Star Wars movie. But yeah, I just appreciate that he spent so much time training, all, all the abilities that he got, everything, it felt earned. And that's so important for a hero. And they had that brilliant scene in The Empire Strikes Back where he went into the cave and he faced off against Darth Vader. Of course, it wasn't really Darth Vader, but this, you know... um. I guess manifestation of Darth Vader and he saw that fear of becoming Darth Vader you know uh, falling to the dark side and it was very on the nose to actually see himself you know within the Darth Vader helmet maybe that was kind of heavy-handed but it worked it, I thought it still was a brilliant scene and then by you know by the time he got to the return of the Jedi especially towards the end the third act he had all this power and he actually realized he didn't have to use it that's something that's so important for a hero. Um, it's not just about gaining power and being able to dominate others or at least hold your own with others. It's about knowing when not to use your power as well. Um, you think about it in terms of video games even, it, it applies sometimes. Like I like to play Hearthstone. And in Hearthstone, there are certain times where it might be your turn, but it might be best not to attack because you may want to save uh, you know, certain minions, whatever it may be. I'm sure there are a lot of other strategy games like that as well that you know where this applies but I think it is again for a hero it's very important to know when to hold back and that was a lesson that he learned now something I really did not like about the force awakens is we got three protagonists of course there was more protagonists than that but we had Ray who already was using um, force powers and actually holding her own with the lightsaber it wasn't earned I don't like that and I, I know that and let me be clear I trust that JJ Abrams will make sure that that is explained in the story that's not what I'm saying I'm not saying that they aren't going to justify it what I'm saying though is that it shouldn't have been that way to begin with with it you know it should have never been written that way in my opinion you know I felt like we need to see that journey again you know these things that 
Luke had to really put in the time and effort for, we shouldn't have this new hero doing these things in the first movie. And then also, um, John Boyega's character Finn, I thought he was going to have a very interesting arc, but not quite so much. I mean, he does have sort of that moral quandary. He does leave, you know, he's a defected stormtrooper, but it's like he left and then that, that kind of just moved on from there. I mean, he still felt, I guess, some residual guilt about like, you know, what he had done, his role that he had played in it, but it just wasn't enough of an arc for me though. And I, I did like kind of the bait and switch and made it seem like he would be the main hero. That wasn't really the case, but still it just... I, I felt like these characters should have earned more. Even Paul Dameron. I really did like Paul Dameron. And I thought that shot of him taking out all of those um, other um, fighters in the sky. That was an amazing shot. That long take. Love long takes like that. But still. You know because he was so talented. And you know. And even Ray and Finn. It's just like I, I didn't really feel any fear for these characters. And that was kind of unfortunate. I think you got to feel like you're the characters can actually die you know um or get seriously injured whatever it may be and with the original trilogy because it was so fresh and everything like that and it really to be fair it's not just that it was fresh and everything like that it's also just from the storytelling that we really didn't know what would happen with those characters and luke did get seriously injured and it did seem like han solo probably could have died you know um especially being frozen in the carbonite and everything so there were some scary moments for those characters and like I said, I just didn't feel that with The Force Awakens, though. Now, with other heroes, I, I think, um, I don't know if these other heroes were inspired by Star Wars or not. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, I will say, though, that with Spider-Man Homecoming, it's a movie that I think is good, not great, you know, just to be real about it. But I do like that they have um, Tom Holland cast well and um again focusing on the writing on the page though spider-man is definitely struggling with not only figuring out his powers but figuring out life you know what we can identify that with that and i'm not going to break down all these characters but we know that all these characters they had their internal struggles they were far from perfect and that's what we really need i don't, I don't have much use for a perfect hero that's why i was not a fan of superman for a long time you know because he just felt too perfect too invulnerable and even with the movies they have going right now, it's like, yeah, okay, in Batman versus Superman, spoiler alert, he, he dies at the end, but then they turn right around and hint at him coming back, and we know he's coming back. So, again, it, it's like it automatically didn't matter. So, um, yeah, I think Luke Skywalker is a good character because he doesn't feel perfect. He, he still feels like, to a certain extent, that young man from Tatooine that's trying to figure things out. Next up here, something else I think is important is that we had an unforced love story within the original trilogy. And it was between two very headstrong characters. We had Princess Leia who was not some dainty princess that didn't speak her mind. She was not just some damsel in distress. In fact, she never really felt like she was in distress. She held her own and she even played the hero at certain moments. You know, she came for Han Solo. That that was epic you know that's very cool to see and um Han Solo obviously you know he does his own thing um he's very much like an anti-hero or you could even more than an anti -hero, he's a reluctant hero like completely a reluctant hero he didn't want to play that role he was looking out for himself so you had two very headstrong characters that honestly never quite figured it all out but I like that that's that's realistic that's how real life can be especially with two headstrong people so I like that this um, developed over time and you know we had the little thing with her trying to make Han Solo je jealous by giving the kiss to Luke and things like that which a lot of people kind of blew that up because they turned out to be brother and sister but I, I think it was obvious you know I, I mean it's very clear she was trying to make um, Han Solo jealous and their, their just interplay it was so well handled and you know part of it was the actors obviously but again it was on the page and that's why it worked in the long run. And a lot of other movies just have not learned from that. They kind of tack on these romances. I remember in the Matrix, um, at the end of the first Matrix, when Trinity said something about the man that she loved would be the one. I'm like, wait, what? I think a lot of people were like, where did that come from? Because there was nothing in that first movie that really showed love between them. Even as the movies progressed still, I never really felt that between them. It wasn't earned. And then um, 
you know, again, I'm not going to address all of these, but I know Ms. Marvel has had some missteps kind of tacking on um, romances that weren't earned. And even with Anakin and Padme, yes, that was a necessary love story. I do. I'm aware of that. It's a necessary love story, but it just was not well written. Part of it, of course, was the bad acting, especially on Anakin's part, you know, Hayden Christensen. But no, it, it just wasn't strong on the page. And that's why. It, we didn't really feel it. It really didn't matter to us in the long run. You know, it just felt like they were checking a box to make sure they took care of that in those prequel movies. So moving on here, something else I like is definitely an intimidating yet sympathetic villain. I think a lot of people have forgotten just how scary Darth Vader can really be. I remember seeing Darth Vader as a kid and just being like, wow, like I was, I was almost terrified of him. And um, that that's the way it should be. And the one thing I do like about um, Rogue One is it was great to see Darth Vader just using his power in, in one of those final scenes. It was amazing. Um, he just kind of wrecked shop. And I really like to see that because he is an intimidating character and the things that he can do. You know, even seeing him use the force choke, I was like, wow. Like, you know, when I saw that when I was younger, I'm like, that is scary that he can harm you without even touching you. So... I think that has influenced some other Hollywood villains, maybe not directly, but even on a subconscious level. And something I like about Darth Vader is he's not a character that runs around yelling. He's obviously capable of moments of violence. And that's something that really works with a lot of great villains. You know, when you have people like um, Hannibal, excuse me, Hannibal, Hannibal Lecter before they overuse the character, by the way, because that is something that does ruin some great villains when they start to overuse them and sequels and they then they start to try to dig dig into their background and they take away some of the mystery then it does kind of make the villain seem a little bit weaker but i like villains that have some mystery and they have like that quietness to them but then those sudden moments of violence and yeah i think darth vader is that's why he's remained one of the greatest villains ever in hollywood because he just handled that so well there was that era of mystery and just that fear that you got when he was around and something else that you have to keep in mind with him is that he was not like the main villain. A lot of people look at it that way, but not really, though. He was basically a subordinate. I mean, he was working for the Emperor. You know, he was loyal to the Emperor. And then there was also Grand Moff Tarkin, I believe is the name. Forgive me if I missed the name up there. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, Darth Vader was a subordinate. He was very much a strong presence, but he was almost like muscle in the original trilogy, um, I'm sure, you know, you got to make some decisions, but still, and he did make some de decisions, but he was very much like muscle. You know, he was, uh, like I said, a subordinate. So that's something else I liked about him so well. Some people think that automatically makes a villain seem weak, but to me, it actually makes him seem a little more sympathetic when you realize that they are under certain pressure as well. And of course, you know, his redemption at the end, again, it felt earned. It felt like uh, it, it really worked its way towards that point and it wasn't forced. <laughs> no no pun intended there. But yeah, I, I just still really appreciate Darth Vader as a villain. And then plot twists. Because the plot twists in Star Wars have become so well known and just a part of our our conscious, you know, in terms of pop culture, I think a lot of people forget all the amazing twists that they had in the original trilogy. And they were handled so well, you know, finding out that Yoda is like this master Jedi and he was going to train Luke. That was surprising. Finding out that Luke and Leia were, you know, brother and sister. That was surprising. Um, you know, uh, Lando Calrissian had being forced to kind of betray them. Maybe not the biggest surprise, but still, it made that interesting. You know, when they went to Cloud City, it made it interesting. And then, of course, the big twist, finding out that Darth Vader was Luke's father. And by the way, it's no, I am your father, not Luke, I am your father. <laughs> I think that's one of the most misquoted lines probably in movie history. But... Yeah, just that was a huge twist. And a lot of people, because they joke about it so much, you know, with their Mari Povich jokes and all that, a lot of people forget that that was an amazing twist. And I think it still holds up. It's, you know, it's just that strong storytelling that I think George Lucas doesn't really get credit for. And um, yes, George Lucas has made his missteps. I'm not going to beat up on him because he's been beat up on enough. There are actually full documentaries about that and everything, but... He did some things right in this original trilogy. That's what I'm really trying to say. 
And then in terms of trilogy structure, I again, I got to give a lot of props to the original trilogy because if you think about the movies one by one, okay, A New Hope, we basically had the rise of the heroes, them coming together, Luke starting to learn some about his background and what he might be capable of. And then Empire Strikes Back, which I say again is one of the best movies. And I, I don't mean just in Star Wars, just best movies, period. Um, you have the fall, basically. You have the heroes at a low point at the end of the movie, not really knowing where things are going to go. That's really strong storytelling to me. And then, of course, we have their redemption, them coming back. You know, of course, Return of the Jedi. And um, I think this is just a strong storytelling structure for a trilogy. The problem we have now is a lot of studios... Um, and, you know, even writers just in general, they don't really plan out trilogies. They take it movie by movie. And then it ends up being kind of boring because what happens in part one? The hero wins. What happens in part two? The hero wins. Part three, the hero wins. It's not really interesting. And a lot of times these trilogies, they don't really feel like trilogies because they're not cohesive stories. And I really wish more, more storytellers, um, especially filmmakers, would plan ahead, have a plan in place, even if there's a chance that the first movie won't do well still have your plan in place in case it does do well you know and um don't have this designed by committee because that was that ruins a lot of stories you know have it planned out at least sketched out to an extent and again i know not all trilogies can do this but this stands up to me i think at some point maybe the villains don't completely triumph but at the same time the hero shouldn't completely win every time because there's nothing interesting about that and of course, one of the major things that the original trilogy did is it built a universe. And there are so many side characters in those first movies that have spun out into their own thing, basically their own side stories, and they pop up in other places. And it's just amazing. There's so much to work with there. And again, it's because it was on the page, because George Lucas put thought into these different characters. And I know some people may not like certain characters. I know the Ewoks still to this day are very divisive but um you know i think there was just so much there to work with you know and some of it of course they did come out the popularity that i would basically say developed out of them being seen on the screen but again if it wasn't on the page then it wouldn't have mattered and now we're starting to see the fruits of george lucas's labor because you know um and I, I don't know why I'm saying now, really, it's, it's been going on for decades at this point. We're, we're continuing, I should say, to see the fruits of his labor. These characters that he originally conceived for that original trilogy, how they've spun out and talked to all these other forms of media and everything. And, of course, we have an upcoming Han Solo movie, which I'm actually OK with uh, the original director stepping down because I, I have a feeling Ron Howard will do a great job. He's not... He doesn't have a perfect track record, but he's a pretty good director. I think people will have to agree with that. So, yeah, the Star Wars universe is basically just nonstop, and it all goes back to where George Lucas began it with the original trilogy. So, yeah, those are my thoughts about the original trilogy. Like I said, not I didn't go super deep into uh, Star Wars lore and things like that, because, again, remember, I'm a casual fan. But like I said, there's so much I appreciate about the storytelling in the original trilogy and um yeah i hope you enjoyed my thoughts on it if uh make sure that you do like this video i definitely put some thought into it um you know give me a comment as well you know what you thought about my thoughts on the movie and definitely subscribe if you are new thank you so much for watching this video now for those of you that are still with me, I'm assuming that you're probably a diehard Star Wars fan. I would hope that's the case, or if not diehard, you really do appreciate Star Wars. So what I want to do is finally go ahead and announce my Star Wars giveaway. I'm not going to put any details on the screen, so do make sure you are listening. Okay, make sure that you are listening. So first of all, let me go ahead and get the rules out of the way, and they're pretty standard for my channel at least. Um, you do need to be a subscriber in the US or Canada. I will have this open to Canada as well. So again, you have to be a subscriber in the US or Canada. I do have to see that you are subscribed, so make sure that you have an account that is public for when I do the drawing. And by the way, the drawing, let me go ahead and say this, I'll probably do the drawing in about 
two weeks or so. Um, I'm not going to put a specific date on it because things will be hectic at work for me, to be completely honest. But I'm going to say I'm going to give it at least two weeks before I do the drawing. All right. So that'll probably put it around, you know, mid-month August. OK, so be on the lookout for it. And also, um, if you're, of course, if you're under the age of 18, you know, make sure you get your parents permission to enter. I'm not going to just send anything your way if you're young and especially if uh, it's obvious that you are young. I want to know that you have checked with your parents that it's OK for you to give out your address if you win. You know, let's be sensible about that. And uh, another big rule that I standard on my channel, don't say anything about this giveaway down in the comments. I, especially, I hope I win. I can't stand that. Please don't do that. I think everybody who enters, obviously, they want to win. So um, don't try to play on my emotions or anything because all that's going to do is agitate me. So please don't say anything about the giveaway. Also, I don't think you want to do that anyway because that's going to lower your chances of winning if other people realize, people that haven't really watched up to this point, realize there's a giveaway then they're going to enter so yeah don't ruin your own chances by making it obvious okay and then um as far as how you enter is concerned that's enough about the rules let me go in and get into how you actually enter here there are three questions that i want you to answer and don't number them by the way please do not number them because that's going to make it obvious that something's going on that there is possibly a giveaway so do not number your answers Okay, but the, here are the three questions and for each question that you answer and you also explain your answer. Okay, I wanted to be clear about that as well. Make sure that you actually explain your answer and put some thought into it. But for each one that you answer in a satisfactory way, you will get one entry. So you can get up to three entries into this giveaway. So first of all, the first question, I want to know what do you think of Star Wars in terms of storytelling? Tell me your own thoughts about it and you don't have to stick to just the original trilogy, just in general, what do you think about Star Wars in terms of storytelling? Okay, so second question, what side story would you like to see on the big screen? So, and you don't have to give me all the details, just like what characters do you think should be the center of another movie? And do make sure you explain why. Okay, so that's complete. I'm leaving that pretty open. That's up to you. But do make sure you explain why you think that character deserves a movie and it could be a group of characters it's really up to you and then the last question this is something that has been rumored and talked about I don't know if, how serious they are about it but I want to hear from you the prequel movies do you think the prequel movies should be remade I know a lot of people were not happy with them but yeah I want to hear from you what you think about that because like I said that is a rumor kind of going around do you think that the prequel movies should be remade or do you think they should just Leave it alone and focus on the future, you know, moving ahead. So, yeah, that's the three questions. Make sure that you answer them thoroughly. It's okay if you space out your answers, you know, so I can see the three separate. But, again, don't number them and don't say anything about the giveaway. Okay? So, um, as far as the prizes are concerned, I'm keeping that under wrap for right now. I do have some ideas in mind. I'll just say this. If you've seen my previous giveaways on my channel, you know that I put thought into my giveaways I try to make sure I have good prizes, so I'm not going to say exactly what it is right now. Like I said, I'm playing around with some ideas. I don't need suggestions either, but trust me, whatever it is, I'm going to make sure that it's worthwhile and that a Star Wars fan would really appreciate it. Okay, so that's going to be it for now. Again, thank you for watching and, and sticking with me all the way through this, and I'll talk to you all again real soon.